everyone, how are you today? I hope you're doing well today. So, we are from group 1. Now, uh, uh, we will present our topic about the model of language. And before we start our presentation today, uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Putudian Artisandi. My name is Aka. And my name is Prima Devi. And today we will discuss several topics. The first one is about the model of language and continue with the systematic functional of linguistic and then relationship between spoken and written language and the last one, the example of research report on model of language. Without any further ado, let's move to the topic. According to Kanaza 2020, language is produced by human civilization in a line with development and also evolution of culture and also technology. As we know, humans are social creatures which means they are cannot live alone. So they need to interact and also communicate with each other. It can be seen here that language has very important role in human life. And also there are several things that causes differences in language use based on the context of the conversation. These things depends on the situation such as differences in age, class, topic of conversation, where the conversation takes place, and how to communicate, and so on. And now, my partner will explain the next topic. Now, I will explain about the culture. So, culture is the complete potential of situation models. So, in this curve, a shift dumps. So, it presents the potential of linguistic resources that can be used in each text display in each uh, special situation. So, in terms of language education, cultures and situations should not be viewed as two things, however, rather the identical thing seen from two contrasting depths of observation. And uh, according to Figue y Redo, in a classroom setting, the teacher sets students up to explore language. So, in this case, the teachers want to realize and interpret the uh, cultural context for language learning in the classroom. Unfortunately, the view of cultures in this context differs from what is generally understood in language education as teaching language, teaching culture. This can be mentioned in Holiday's statement. So when we discuss about the cultural context for language education, we must step beyond the limitation of popular understanding of cultures which is determined solely by one's ethnic origin. So we all, uh, we all age in various cultures at the same times. And language education is the principal mechanism by which we learn to do so. Alright, so now I would like to explain about Zondra. So Zondra construct meaning by forming the register variables by conditioning. The first is feel, which is about what is going on in a given situational context. The second is tenor, which is about how people or the participant relate to one another within the situations. And the third is mood which is about the medium and the channel chosen for communications during the conversations. And the three variables are combined in repeated the patterns in a certain culture. It is stated that the semiotic system contained in register and zondra is different from other semiotic system such as language, music, dance, images, etc. Which states that register and zondra are types of parasites. It means both have no phonology of their own, so the only way to create meaning is by using words and structures from the semantic system we call language. In defining Zondra, Holiday also introduced three types of meaning in correlations into the SFL of literature. They are ideational, interpersonal, and textual, which is respectively correlated with feel, tenor, and mode of register. Holiday called the three meanings by meta functions, which further explanation, namely, additional meaning refers to the text itself, interpersonal refers to the relationship based on language use, and textual meaning refers to the information contained in the text. So now I would like to give you the example of Zendra typically used in school context. We must know about stories. And we also familiar that the purpose of the story is to entertain people. So the example of stories are reading a narrative, sharing an anecdote, and it could be also innovating on a fable. 
And now I will continue to the register. According to Agins and Martin 1997, Register is phenomenon that is closely related to the context. Technically, the contextual dimension can influence a person's language in conveying its meaning and also their linguistic expression. Thus, language use will affect a person and also influenced by the context so that it can convey certain meanings and also expression. According to Holidays uh, 1985, there are three essential factors in register. The first one is feel, then tenor, and also mood. Feel is referred to the content or material being discussed by the speaker, and tenor refers to the participant who take part uh, in linguistic action. So it can depend on your job, age, social class, or when you want to talk to someone. And the last one is about mood. Mood is refers to the channel of communication between the speakers, and they are two type of mode. The first one is oral or speaking mode and the second one is written mode. And also, um, if you want to know about the example, uh, I will explain of, uh, the example of field, tenor, and also mode for the situation. In one situation, you find a group of friends so a group of friends here is a tenor and in the, in the canteen and then uh, they are discussing. Discussing is about the mood. They use like oral or spoken mood and then their school trips plans. And their plans, their school, uh, school trip plans is talk about the content so it's filled. Next is about how genre and register work. So according to Al Yusuf and Al Yahya, a genre emerged from register which manifested itself through language. The concept of met uh, metarudency implies that register is a pattern of linguistic choices and genre is the pattern of register choices. An extension has been made to the language model where uh, genre and registers are, are understood as a layer connotative semiotic system with fields of expressions referring to language use. So this connotative semiotic refers to the use of the opposite of the notative semiotics which has its own uh, field of expression. Accordance with Tawada, genre and register simultaneously have uh, influence of speakers in the choice of grammar use. Genre affects the types of language choice by speakers which is then adapted to the cultural context of the interlocutor at a certain time. A simple example is when speakers has to try to change the way uh, he speaks according to the place where he is at the time. It is different with registers which affect the types of language choice of speakers according to the context of the situation. Registers are usually influenced by conditions when communication takes place, which can occur formally or informally. Alright, back with me again. So now I would like to explain about the systemic functional linguistics. As previously mentioned, Holiday introduced the concept of SFL in which three types of metafunctions are used to interpret the semantic components of SFL models. There's Meta functions are the first, the additional is more easily recognized by the content of the message or things that are implied in a text. The main component in additional is transitivity, which refers to the process of the clause, the speaker, and the accompanying circumstances. And second is interpersonal meta functions that refers to the relationship that occurs between participants in a conversation as well as the speaker and the message conveyed. The main feature of interpersonal is the analysis of the mood. And the last is textual meta functions are included in the potential meaning that determines a text to become a text and not a simple series of words. The main element in the textual meta functions is the thematic structure, including the analysis of clauses in the theme and rim. In linguistics, there is a close relationship between semiotic functions and semantic metafunctions, which are field correlates with additional metafunctions, 
tenor correlates with interpersonal metafunctions and mood correlates with sexual metafunctions. These three correlations are closely influenced by the importance of the relationship between context and language in SFL theory. Or, in other words, language cannot be separated from the context that produces it. Now we move to the relationship between spoken and written language. According to Harney 1987, the spoken and written relationship in language contains several differences such as, as mental processes at work, audience distance, discourse structures in age, the role of editors, and also the last one, the nature of change in the two forms. Spoken language is considered a common and normal natural productive tool by the people while written language is considered a bit complicated because of the birth rules. Spoken and written language are always related to each other and it's very often debate which one is more influential. In society, spoken language is the first learned than the writer. For example, some people whose language is dead and do not have a written form of spoken language. Spoken language is more widely spoken than written language and it, it is evident that when most people speak more than they write and also this is aligned with a study by Holiday which found that on average for two months people were able to pronounce more words than those find in Shakespeare's place. According to SLB 2019, the writing system that everyone has shown that their education and it's considered a social class but it's not like obtained to read it like the oral form. The written form is more functional and reliable in financial agreements, law, signatures, and also contracts between people. And then for the written language is also superior to spoken language in influencing each other. That's because spelling mistakes can affect speech but the evac is not the same as the pronunciation affected by spelling. Next, about the example of research report on model of language. So we use an analysis from uh, Mutmainah and Sutopo in 2016 from the example of research report on model language. So Mutmainah and Sutopo conducted research on the explanations of spoken the text conversation from one of the TV talk show, namely Talk Indonesia, and conclude that there were various spoken features used by speakers or participants in the talk show. And this research is uh, the, uh, using descriptive qualitative because this research has a purpose in observing and seeking information about the uh, phenomena. So the data taken from this research are conversations from the TV talk shows and the data obtained using ob uh, observations, uh, sensing information from the community as well as from the commentary records. So the participants of this study show spontaneity but there were filled posts, repeated a few words and show incomplete utterance uh, and wrong beginnings when expressing them. So the result of this study found five features, namely laughter, approval, disagreement, had a uh, heading, uh, heading, unclear language, and empathy. So there were several interruptions and avalanche that occurred during the talk show. And the result of this study include the four outcomes, namely spontaneity, information flow, interactivity, and coherence. Spontaneity in the conversations on the talk show consists of fill-in pauses, then repetition, wrong beginnings, and backtracking, and participants interpersonally when following the TV show. So the next is the flow of information or interpersonally. Namely, conversations on the talk show such as louder or giggling, disagreement or heading, uh, hedging with unclear language, agreement and unclear language, appro uh, approval or protections evaluative language. So interactivity, where participants engage in conversations or when participants in this talk show, which uh, consistent, uh, consists of interruptions and overlaps. So coherence in this conversation consists of lexical, lexical chains, uh, references of uh, expressions, substitution and linking, and mac macro level coherence. Well, we're heading to the last sessions of the presentations. So now I would like to conclude of what have we explained previously. Alright, humans are social beings 
who interact and communicate in living life. So in our presentations, we also learn the information about the model of language, which discuss the culture, what genre and register are regarding to the discussions of feel, tenor, and modes, and how this genre and register work. We also learn about holiday systemic functional linguistics, which is including ideational, interpersonal, and textual metafunctions. And those metafunctions have respectively correlate with field, tenor, and mode of register. In addition, in communicating, we recognize two ways of communication through spoken and written language. Well, I think that's all about our presentations. We do apologize if there is any mistake and thanks for your attention. So goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.